Do you like Central Park? The, the park that's the central area of New York City? Well, I do, but I also like the 20th Century Fox and Apple TV's uh, cartoon series taking place in Central Park of the same title. It's this really cool musical show with uh, starring a lot of uh, musical actors voicing most of the major parts. And it's even from Lauren Boucher and Nora Smith, the same creator, producer, and the animation studio that made Bob's Burgers. Now, normally, normally I wouldn't draw too many connections between two animated programs that look the same and have the same producers working on them, but uh, I do feel the need to do that this time because I noticed that the season 9 premiere of Bob's Burgers just one of the boys for now for now. It had four big musical guest actors in it who each got to voice a major part in Central Park. Now, now the Okay, there's two plots, but the main plot of just one of the boys for now for now is this. <sighs> Max Greenfield's Boo Boo drops out of the boys for now boy band that you've probably seen back in season three, in the season three episode Boys for Now, and... And, uh... Tina wants to be the girlfriend of this one boy with whom she fell in love with uh, Damon, who is, and he's voiced by Josh Gad, the same guy who plays uh, Birdie in Central Park, the main narrator. And as she go on, she meets uh, a whole bunch of, uh, she meets four other boys whom she imagines singing songs for her. First, uh, you know, David Herman, who voices Mr. Freinbaum's Burgers, and, uh, you know, Dimitri and a bunch of other uh, incidental characters in Central Park. Uh, he plays a boy in the back of the line who asks Tina for gum, and it was kind of funny about how every time Tina looks at one of these boys for five seconds, she's able to imagine them singing a song for her right on the spot. It, uh, and it definitely feels like a Central Park episode with Bob's Burgers characters in a good way because of who's singing the songs. That's not to say that uh, I thought all Bob's Burgers characters got silent. I mean, the, the non-Tina main characters also had their own stuff going on with uh, hiding Teddy's rat from Hugo, the mean health inspector. Uh, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, when Tina goes there, she she has to, uh, yeah, Tina Belcher is a girl who has to disguise herself as a boy, Dino, so that she can wait in line with the rest of the boys auditioning to replace Boo Boo and Boys for Now and try to find Damon again. So, uh, so, yeah. So she meets uh, Chad. So yeah, in the bath, in the boys' bathroom, she meets she meets uh, Chad, who is voiced by Royal Malley, who also plays Elwood in Central Park, and uh, all of his friends are girls. So he would like to have he'd like to also be friends with the boy. And and then Tina has him. Um, in her imagination, seeing this really cool romance comedy movie themed song about how you know, he's in the friend zone with Tina, but then after she, but after she breaks up with the boy who went to prom with her because he was just dancing with her on her bed, she realizes that Chad was the boyfriend waiting for her all along.
So I, after him, Tina gets back in line, and she keeps making excuses to, for, you know, the other boys to allow her to get in front by telling her that, you know, he, by, by telling her that, that, you know, her brother lost, uh, her brother's ahead of her, and he needs something. But, uh, and, you know, I guess since Tina is already voiced by a male actor, it was easier for, easier for her than you think to pretend to be a boy, but then she meets another guy who won't fall for her. My brother's in front. My brother's ahead of you lies. And he was Jesse, voiced by Dovey Diggs, who also voices Helen in Central Park. And in Tina's song she imagined with him, they have a very complicated but interesting to watch love hate relationship. <laughs> Where he goes, I hate the way I love you, but I love the way I hate you, and I kind of want to date you. When, well, then when uh, Tina sees, uh, Damon at the top of the stairs, she quickly runs past Jesse and he's mad because and she broke the rules. Got long again. Then she sees uh, Damon again, but then she also sees his friend Hayden. And Hayden, who is voiced by Andrew Rannells, who also got to be Josh Gad, Birdie's rival busker, in the aptly titled Rival Busker. Yeah, there's T.A.O. Hayden was singing a really cool bass opera, but then Damon came in, and then they... And then they started having an epic rap battle in space. And when I watched this episode for the second time, it reminded me you know, very much of Rival Busker knowing who voices each of these boys singing for Tina. Funny because you know there's first you know like Josh Gatta and Andrew Reynolds as Damon and Hayden they were, were fighting over Tina and Bob's burgers and then as Bertie and Griffin they're fighting over narrator control of the camera focus and rival busker when they were when they were singing different parts of the opening song first class hands but, you know, it's also funny because you know this is probably not a coincidence I, I think they were also uh, enemies in the Book of Mormon and Rory O'Malley was in that play with them I mean I haven't actually seen the play the Book of Mormon but uh, yeah I haven't actually seen the Book of Mormon so so this Bob's Burgers episode having four of the same actors as a later series, Central Park, is is much bigger news to me. It must be an uncultured swine. So after that last song with Hayden and Damon's rap battle, Tina tells... Uh, David, you know, she wants to uh, turn their one moment with the napkin mess into a million loving moments. But uh, David and Hayden weren't really that interested in having her as a girlfriend, I guess. And it turned out, you know, there's also uh, six or seven other girls like Tina who also pretend to be boys. And the episode ends with the, you know, Lin with the Booba coming back to voice for now and Linda telling Tina that, uh, you know, it's good to be boy crazy or it's good to be boy focused and she can fall in love as many times as she likes. And, uh, and then the Boys For Now band sings, The right number of boys for you is for forever. And, uh, 
Tina's imagination put a very interesting spin on that song where where uh, I guess any number of boys would be the right way for her and uh, you know all five of the of the boys from this episode except for Damon got to have another line to speak or sing in this at song. How about five? You'll feel alive. How about six? Get your kicks. How about seven? Sounds like heaven. It could be great. No pants in space. More, 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 forever, more, 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 forever, boys. The right number of boys for you is more forever. That's right. Now, yeah, and uh, you know, in the grand tradition of all those other boys who sung for Tina, I have my own song I'd like to sing as a heartfelt love letter to the people who wrote just one of the boys for now for now because uh, you know it was a pretty cool season 9 premiere but I thought it was even cooler that but what's even cooler than that is the possibility of it being a spiritual predecessor to Central Park Thank you for writing just one of the boys. It was an awesome season nine for me here. But it left an even bigger impact than you anticipated here. You got most of the same cast back, the same for Central Park. As a musical story, it sure left a big mark. I think it's cool that Laura and Nora co-created the show with Josh Gad. And to make a full musical series, they were very glad Being a, a musical series may not be on brand for Bob's Burgers. They only do it sometimes. They only do it sometimes, but making a new show for that was a genius move for shores. Thank you for watching this video. I'm uh, sorry that song was a little bit slower than I expected, but uh, you know, coming up with lyrics on the spot is hard. 
it's probably this is probably how long it took the writer or writers of just one of the boys for now for now to write the lyrics for each of the five songs that Tina imagine the boys sing for her. I didn't watch this episode when it was originally on it in 2018, but I'm sure watching it after Central Park started in 2020 is probably a whole different experience than watching it before Central Park started, right? You know, watching it after Central Park is, you, know, you see it much away from before Central Park started because, you know, then, because when you watch this episode after you watch Central Park, all you hear is, uh, probably, all you hear is, uh, is Birdie, Elwood, Helen, and Griffin singing these imaginary boyfriend songs for Tina. Which, you know, I, that was a very fun experience to come back to this episode after Central Park. And hearing boys who also sound like characters with prominent singing parts in Central Park. That's why I believe that the season 9 premiere of Bob's Burgers is what gave Lauren Boucher, Nora Smith, and Josh Gad the idea for Central Park after the fact. So they could make a whole new musical series. They could make a whole new series to be a musical with Josh Gantz, musical actor Friends, and Stanley Tucci instead of, uh, instead of trying to rebrand Bob's Burgers as a full-time musical show like, uh, you know, like Donkey Kong Country or Phineas and Ferb. Thank you for watching this video, and I really hope you enjoy Bob's Burgers in Central Park and the Great North. I underestimated the Great North because, uh, you know, I first I thought it was as interesting as Central Park, but, uh, and, you know, there's a, it already has folks on all kids at once in season one, but, uh, you know, now the Great North is, uh, I thought it was really starting to take off after the, after the Yon the Dead adventure, and I'd love to see the Great North make at least 100 episodes so that, uh, it can do more with all the kids and the voice actors for them that they've set up in the first two seasons because believe me there are a lot of kids at school a lot more kids at school to name and identify in the great north than in a singular episode or three than there were when Bob's Burgers first two or three seasons introduced them I mean I think seasons one and two were really just like different parts of a full season even though they have two even though they're two different production cycles because season one was short, and Fox didn't know if it wanted to give it full fall string seasons yet. But yeah, but yeah, but yeah. In 2021, I really am starting to uh, appreciate Bob's Burgers, Central Park, and the Great North for all they're worth. And I'm sure the people at the good people at Fox and Wild Productions are too. Okay, that's uh, all for now. I'm done with everything I wanted to say in this video. So goodbye. And have a happy Thanksgiving.